I'm going to speak to you about polarization and Malice's law. I absolutely love this joke. Where does bad light end up? In prism. <laughs> All right, I'm really tired of laughing at my own jokes. So I think uh, that's just the way it is. Um, I love these dumb jokes. So let's talk about polarization. Um, it's defined as the plane of vibration of an electromagnetic wave. So an electromagnetic wave really means light. When we say the plane of vibration, it gets a little bit complicated because we're trying to draw light, which is a 3D uh, object, so to speak, uh, and trying to represent it in two dimensions. So I want you to imagine this light coming straight towards you right now. So if you can see me, light coming straight, straight towards you. Okay. If light is coming straight towards you, there's going to be an, uh, let's say, a magnetic field, let's say, going up and down like this, oscillating straight up and down. And there'll be an electric field oscillating, let's say, left and right like this. So as the light's coming towards you, you'll be an oscillating magnetic field and electric field. Now the problem is, how do you draw that? We have to decide on either electro, um, electric field or magnetic field being uh, polarization. And in terms of what you need for physics SL, it actually doesn't matter which one you choose. We're going to say light is polarized. It's just going to be the direction of oscillation. So instead of seeing it as uh, electric uh, and magnetic fields that are sort of perpendicular to each other, just consider just one oscillation uh, plane. Either it's magnetic or electric, it actually doesn't matter. So I'm going to try to draw this. This is always really hard to do uh, for me because I'm a lousy artist. So I'm going to try to actually draw, okay, this is light. You know, you could say this right here is some sort of wavy thing. This could be light. And I would say then that light is traveling in this direction, you know, to the right. So I could say, all right, the direction of travel, that's that direction. As it's traveling that way, it's going to have like an up or down or sort of left or right um, uh, polarization. In other words, the direction of its vibration will be in some direction. So I'm going to try to draw this. Of course, it's going to be really bad, but I'm going to try to draw, for example, like, you know, something like this. What that means is that each of them is going to be angled at, at some angle. Uh, that is a little bit difficult to uh, see because this is in 3D. But like I said, just imagine it's light coming straight towards you. Let's just say we define the polarization as like, like this, for example. And another photon might be you know, polarization like this or like this or like whatever angle. So this angle of this plane of vibration of the light, that is what the polarization is. I've got a key thing right here to tell you is that, uh, maybe I'll say this right here. So light from the sun, maybe we'll need this right here. So light from the sun is usually unpolarized. So for the most part, uh, light from the sun is not polarized. So what that means is that each photon you get is sort of randomly polarized. One photon, if it's coming straight towards you, maybe one of them is you know straight up and down, you know, up and down. We'd say it's vertically polarized. Uh, the next photon could be one that's sort of left and right. So we could say that's horizontally polarized. The next photon could be like this. So to see how the, the plane of polarization of each of these photons is pretty random. That's what we mean by unpolarized. So now if something is polarized, it means, uh, you know, if like all the light is polarized, that means every photon that's uh, reaching you would have the same plane. Let's say it's all vertical or horizontal or whatever. So let's look at this Malice's law and what it means. Um, what I like to do is maybe draw you and attempt to draw this idea here of light coming in. So we're going to have light of intensity in this case right here, I zero. So light has an intensity of the incident light. We're going to call it I zero. And by the way, it's got units of, uh, let's see here, it said uh, watts per meter squared. Intensity of a transmitted light, we're going to call that over here, but I'll just put in the units here, watts per meter squared. And the angle, of course, is going to be theta, just to get all these units here. So we're going to see this right here. Incoming light is going to have an incident um, intensity. We're going to have the transmitted light. So when we're finally done, we're going to have this uh, intensity of the transmitted light. That's going to be what's going to come out. And what happens is this. The light coming in is initially randomly polarized, or we say unpolarized. So that means that the direction could be anything. But now what we're going to do, we're going to throw in this polarizer and let's just say this first one, let's say it's vertically polarized. Does that make sense? Like the light coming in now has to pass through this vertical polarizer. I've once seen the explanation for this. It's like, uh, imagine like a hula hoop 
and you're trying to fit that like in the slats of a fence. Imagine like, you know, you have a fence and you try to fit the hula hoop through it. That kind of works, but it doesn't quite work because it turns out light, let's say the polarizer is vertically polarized. What that means is that only the vertical component of the light is allowed to exit that vertical polarizer number one, for example. So that means that light could be polarized like this or like this or like this or straight up and down. It's not just that the only straight up and down one will come out. It's that if it's at an angle, there's going to be a component. You know, there's going to be a vertical component. That piece will also get through. So this idea of using a hula hoops instead of going through uh, fences doesn't quite work. I think it's better to say it's the vertical component. Remember, because we can break up anything into vectors, a vertical component and a horizontal component. So it's the vertical part that gets through. But the good news is the kind of light that exits this thing right here, okay, so the light that exits this right here, we're going to say it's a vertically polarized. Okay, and that's because only the vertical part came out. So that should hopefully make sense. So now that means light, which is initially unpolarized or randomly polarized, passes through the polarizer. And there's a reason why we call it that, because only light now the only light that can pass through this polarizer to come out is going to be vertically polarized. In other words, now all the light coming out of polarizer one is light that's polarized straight up and down. That's it. Then you have polarizer two. And what you do with that one, you have a random angle. So here it depends on how you want to do it. But basically, do you see how this first one, the polarizer, let's say it's vertical, maybe polarizer number two, maybe it's at some angle. So see how we can define the angle between like the first one and the second one? We can define that angle theta. That's the theta that's here in Malice's law, like this. So what it really tells us then, uh, we're going to have an equation uh, that we actually have to write down the law, don't we? So it goes like this. I equals I zero cosine squared of the angle. This is an equation on your data booklet. Really important. That's Malice's law. So that's it. So what it tells you then is that the intensity of the transmitted light is going to be equal to the initial or the incident light's trans, um, intensity times the cosine squared of the angle between them. I want you to look very carefully at this. Do you remember what cosine of 90 is? Just for fun, do you remember what cosine of 90 is? It's zero. So this tells you something really, really special. Check this out. If the angle is zero, imagine you have a polarizer that's vertical and the second one is also vertical. Can you see that? Then the angle between these two is zero. That means only vertically polarized light comes out of the first one. And that means out of the second one, also vertically polarized light comes out. In that case, if the angle is zero, cosine of zero is one. So that means the transmitted, uh, so the in, uh, incident light is going to be the same as the transmitted light. So that means, you know, everything goes through. It's not quite true because things are absorbed and reflected, but in this case, it's pretty much this. As far as uh, physics SL, at least in HL, is concerned, this is good enough. What's interesting though is what if it's 90 degrees? Let's do the other extreme. What if the angle between those two polarizers is 90 degrees? Imagine one like this and one like this. That means only the vertical polarizer, uh, only the vertically polarized light comes out of the first one, but the second one is horizontally polarized. None of the vertically polarized one has a component in the horizontal direction. So in this case, if the angle, this is an important thing right here, we'll put this down maybe. So if, so if theta equals 90 degrees, I equals zero. This is like in a really important thing right here. Okay, so if the angle between uh, the two polarizers is 90 degrees, then you're gonna have nothing come out, right? This is gonna be, you know, opaque, we say. So some really cool examples of this. So we can have fishing glasses. So let's say you want to actually see the fish in the water here. And there's the sun in there. Wait. The sun's light actually will do something like this, right? The sun's light will sort of, you know, bounce off this right here and create what we call glare. So in other words, you're trying to look at the fish. You know, you're attempting to see the fish here. Uh, so you want to, you know, you want to see the fish in the water here. But the problem is you're trying to look in the water and the glare, you know, the sunlight is, you know, it's really hurting your eyes. You can't see the fish. So what you do is you can use this um, fishing glasses, they're called, so polarized fishing glasses. What happens is this, there's a really cool property that if light reflects off a surface, pretty much all of it is going to be horizontally polarized. So in other words, it's going to be parallel to the surface. So if the sun's light, which is initially unpolarized, if it bounces off the surface of uh, the water, or like let's say the surface of your car or something like that, like the car hood, 
if it bounces off of it, most of the light then will be horizontally polarized. So what do you do? You wear some glasses that are actually vertically polarized. Why do you want them vertically polarized? So they'll remove the horizontally polarized glare from the sun. That way then, boom, you can see the fishies. You can always tell uh, two different sets of uh, polarized fishing glasses, because if you take two polarizers, just turn them 90 degrees to each other and you shouldn't see anything through them. So you can, you know, go to Walmart or something and if there is one in your town or your country um, and take two sets of, you know, fishing glasses, take two sets and just rotate them 90 degrees and look through them. You should not be able to see through them. Then you know they're polarized. Now the windows on, Ka on Qatar Airways flights, that's also really interesting. Uh, when I rode one of their flights, what's really interesting is that you can just choose, you can actually choose to dim your window. And basically the way this works, you've got two polarizers. You've got a window, you know, with a polarizer this way, and you got a window behind it with that. And then by pressing little buttons to basically change, you change the angle of the second polarizer. You can essentially make your windows pretty much see nothing or really clear. It's kind of magic. Now let's do an example. The example is we have unpolarized light is incident on a vertical polarizer. So maybe before starting off, I'll just actually draw this. So now I have some sort of vertical polarizer here. So that means here we go, a vertical polarizer. And I've got my light coming in this way. What happens? It enters a second polarizer at an unknown angle to the first. Okay, so there's my second polarizer here. And I don't know the angle of this one right here. I don't know the angle of the second one. So I don't know. Question mark. Don't know. If the intensity of the transmitted light, this is the important thing right here, the intensity is half the incident intensity. So what that means is that I equals I0 over 2. It's exactly half the incident intensity. We're supposed to write an expression for the angle theta between the two polarizers. Well, we can use uh, good old Malice's law, right? We can use our good old pal. Remember, it goes I equals I zero cos squared theta. And that means then if we plug this in, so we put this in so that the examiner knows that you know what you're talking about. Then you take this, say, all right, well, I replace I with I zero over two. If that makes any sense, then I can say, all right, that means I want I zero over two. That's what I is. That's what the uh, transmitted intensity is. Uh, equals I0 cos squared theta. Now, do you notice something? The I zeros cancel out. So now I have one over two, I'll just write over here, one over two equals cos squared theta. Now, how do you get theta by itself? Do you remember what you do? You take the, uh, well, first of all, I could take the square root of all this, couldn't I? So I could take say that cos theta equals the square root of one over two. Technically, it's plus or minus. You got to watch out. It's actually technically plus or minus. Um, but remember, the square root of one is just one. So I could rewrite it then as cos theta is just plus or minus one over square root of two. And if I want to take theta by itself, I take the inverse cos. So that's how I finally do it. I do the inverse cosine of plus or minus one over root two. That's technically what I should do. You can take a look and see if you need the positive or the negative, but this is this is a general expression for it, right? Then you can think about the physics and what's a physical uh, situation here. But I think this is actually really nice to see that this is the this is how you can do it. It's actually it starts off pretty simple. The equation itself looks gross, and I saw an example very much like this on a paper one where that was one of the cho choices. You had to you know you had to know that it was inverse cosine of one over root two.